Hey all, so today we're going to talk about a, a fun little topic. Uh, we're going to try and myth bust the argument of whether or not you should or shouldn't or uh, can fire full power 10 millimeter out of your Delta Elite. Um, basically, I want to put a disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a metallurgist. I'm not a gunsmith. I'm not an ammunition manufacturer. I'm just someone that's done a fair bit of testing and spent a lot of time reading articles and different stuff and have kind of formed my own opinion and want to give you my thoughts. So feel free to down below, tell me I'm wrong or agree with me or whatever you want to do and uh, we'll go from there. So first, let's determine what is considered full power 10 millimeter. Uh, generally, when people are referencing full power ammunition for the 10 millimeter, they're referencing the original Norma loading, the original Jeff Cooper loading of basically this right here. I'm sure some people have picked up on it. Um, I have a few boxes of the original 200 grain projectile going at 1200 feet per second. And it's nice because on the back here it gives all the information of what the projectile is supposed to do. Um, apparently according to modern testing the powder's gone kind of soft and you won't get that anymore but that's what it would have done when it was fresh. Keep in mind, this stuff is from the 80s. Um, so that's what they consider full power. And the reason why normal off-the-shelf 10 millimeter is not like that anymore, it you kind of have to blame the FBI and the whole 40 Smith and Wesson thing. And it's that if you want if you want an elongated story on that, go watch uh, Military Arms Channel's um, video. He talks about the 10 millimeter. And he does an excellent presentation on like why modern 10 is kind of lame when it comes to the original stuff and why um, why we ha now have 40 Smith and Wesson. So that's what that's what they're referencing is people want to be able to fire the original hot loading uh, that everybody know knew and loved from back then. So let's get into why people say you shouldn't do it. Uh, there's two major things they say that are going to happen to your gun. One, you're going to either have your frame crack and, and fall apart, or uh, because there's a partially unsupported chamber, you're going to basically have like a detonation inside your gun. Um, both of those I can explain and pretty much give you information on how you dispel that. Um, I, I would start by saying this. Uh, for anybody that asks that, or if you, if you ever are talking with someone and they say that, ask them, why is it that this gun was developed back in the 80s when this was all that was on the market? And don't you think if the gun couldn't handle that, they would have never released it with, uh, with this being the only stuff on the market, this, this stuff being basically what the gun was developed around? But let's get into it, shall we? So the original thing they were talking about with the frame cracking issue was originally 1911s with high round count and 45 would crack right about here in the frame. It was, it was uncommon, but it happened. And then when the Delta Leak came out, of course, with a much more powerful 10 millimeter cartridge, the issue became more prevalent. So what Colt did was they cut out this little notch here, and what it did was it, it removed a stress accumulation point, basically. So there was no stress accumulation point there for the crack to start happening, so it doesn't. Um, the other thing they did was they put they replaced the metal guide rod with a plastic Delrun guide rod. Uh, and I have my original here, right, just a plastic guide rod. Um, this I don't particularly agree with, but I will at the end I will talk about like how I've changed my gun around to make it much, much more reliable. Um, but basically, this came from Colt, because I called them and talked about this. They basically claimed that the reason why they did that was kind of to make a, a weak link in the gun, where if you're firing particularly hot loads and you're bashing your gun apart, rather than it bashing the gun, it would just break up the little plastic guide rod. It would, you know, not necessarily break it up, but it would be the weakest thing. It would be the first thing to break in the gun kind of be like, hey, you know, easy to replace a guide rod, then bash your frame apart. 
Uh, so that's what they did to try and kind of eliminate the frame cracking issue. So the other thing that's a big argument is the unsupported chamber. And I'm going to show here what they're referencing that, partially unsupported. Now, I'm going to try and show this, but you see how up on this side, the uh, chamber goes all the way up to the end of the casing, up to the um, extractor groove. But down here, along the bottom, there's a little bit of space where there's some some part of the case that's not supported. Now, the theory is that, and this could happen with any gun, um, is be, if you have a thin, junk, junkier brass, that when the round goes off, rather than all the pressure going out the front and being contained, that you could have a blowout in the back of the casing, and either you could have the case head separation or just a, you know, just blow apart or whatever, and it would basically detonate inside the gun, giving you a bad day. Um, as long as you use decent brass, I don't consider that a problem at all. Um, and in fact, I've, you know, I can show, uh, later I'll talk about, you know, what I've done and everything and what I shoot out of my gun, but as long as you're using decent brass, that's kind of not an issue. Um, the original Norma, Norma load, the original Norma brass was actually cut down 30 Remington brass. And it was because it was rifle brass, it was much thicker and it kind of supported itself because 30 Remington obviously had no issues containing a little 10 millimeter. But um, so, and again, this could happen with any gun. So I, I kind of, when people make that argument, I'm like, well, you know, that happening could happen with any gun if you're using cheap junk brass. The thing I say to that is if you're going to reload it, don't uh, don't go buy the cheapest brass you can find on the planet and then be surprised when you hot load a cartridge and, you know, something like that happens. If you're going to load a high power, high performance ammunition, make sure to use high quality brass. Um, one brand I like in particular is Starline. Starline, they'll even do cutaways of their brass. I know on like their Instagram and stuff and they will show where uh, their brass is thicker in places where other companies aren't. So that kind of that kind of dispels the uh, fat, the risk of the gun detonating because of an unsupported chamber. So basically, um, short answer for can you, should you, uh, will will I keep doing? Yes, your gun is perfectly capable of firing full power 10 millimeter ammunition. Uh, the gun was developed around the time when, quote-unquote, full-power ammunition was all that was available. And as long as you're using quality ammunition, you'll run into no issues. Now, I have made several modifications, not several, a few modifications to my gun to make it more um, agreeable on my gun, I guess. You make, it, make it that it's uh, much easier to shoot the full-power ammunition than uh, what the current wimpy stuff on the market is. Um, here's the thing, with any gun out there, any gun on the planet, if you fire a full power or a high power cartridge through your gun continuously, of course it's going to wear your gun faster. Um, guns are machines, they break eventually, they wear out eventually. So, um, basically it's, a, it's how how, what do you want to do to make your gun last longer? And here's what I've done. Um, for one, I have upped my recoil spring to a 24 pound instead of a 23 pound. Uh, oddly enough, and this is something I might recommend everybody to do, because after putting in, sorry about that, after putting in the 24 pound spring, that spring will still cycle the other brass. It will still cycle the slower 180 grain uh, factory stuff and it will also cycle the high power stuff. So I personally think that the uh, Delta Elite with a 23 pound spring is kind of undersprung, but that's just my own personal opinion. So that's one of the things I did was I changed and beefed up my spring. The other thing I did was I got rid of my plastic Delrin guide rod. Um, this guide rod, and you can do many, many searches on the internet, is kind of 
as they stated from Colt, kind of a weak point in the gun. Well, it's a weak point, and it, what happens is, is um, there many guns have plastic guide rods, don't have issues. The 1911 came from the factory with a metal one, uh, from you know John Browning, and they should have stuck with that. So what happens is, as your frame is recoiling back into your slide, it's smashing this little plastic guide rod and it's like pushing it out. And I actually started getting malfunctions with this, even with factory ammunition, right? With, with this plastic guide rod, because it was like blowing it out a little and deforming it to where it was rubbing it up against the sides of the frame, causing malfunctions. As second I removed it, they all went away. Um, so I replaced it with a metal one. I put a Wilson Combat one in, and then as to kind of, to kind of further protect my gun, I stuck a little Wilson Combat buffer on here, right? These are like $6 for a six pack, right? So it's like a buck a pad, right? I put one of them in and that allows me to still have that there's a little bit of a buffer, right? Just to be extra super safe. But I have the quality of a metal guide rod that I know that's not gonna deform and break. Um, as I stated, I also use uh, decent brass. All of the brass I use for my high power loads is decent Starline or something like that that I know is quality and I know is not going to have issues. So basically, like I said, in short, can you shoot it? Yes, you can most certainly shoot full power ammunition out of your gun. Um, if you're planning on doing it, I would highly recommend if you're going to reload, start slow. With any gun, you know, if you're working up towards a hotter load, you want to start start at, start at a point lower than what you want to get to, just so you can work up there. Um, there, is, there is, in fact, load data in load books that give you the original 12, uh, 1,200 feet per second loading. And here I have, uh, you know, I have my carry ammunition sitting here, and, you know, 100 rounds, uh, rated at 1200 feet per second so uh basically you know the 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 whole myth of your gun blowing up is i think i think a lot of it what happened and, and here I'll, I'll i'll close with my personal opinion i think what happened was i think the frame cracking issue the fact that it in the very beginning of production it started happening more than it was with the normal 1911s i think that was i think that scared some people um, you know, Colt since fixed that. And I think the fact that after the FBI kind of got a hold of it and then like people started loading the 40 Smith and Wesson and then 40 Smith and Wesson became all the rage because the FBI picked it up and the police picked it up. I'm guessing what happened is some brass companies probably just said, well, Hey, we can take the, the, the mold or whatever, you know, we, we make 40 off of you know, the casing, and if we just elongate the casing a little bit more, we can still um, load 10 millimeter. And of course, they, they started loading 10 millimeter lighter because of that. And I think when people started taking that brass and saying, well, hey, I'll just bring it back up to the original loading, that's probably when they started getting issues, and that's probably where that started. So uh, that's my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, I shoot full power 10 millimeter out of this thing every single time I'm at the range. Um, I, you know, it's pretty common where I'll go to the range with 100 rounds and leave with an empty box. And as you can see, the gun has not blown up. Uh, it's a little dirty, might need a cleaning, but um, it has not blown up. And I continue to shoot it and will continue to shoot it with full power loads and enjoy it. So, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below, and have a good day.